Hey guys, uh, I'm on making a little documentary about truth about building your own your own e-bike. Um, there's a few things you should know before you even start. If you're anything like me, then uh, I guess you've already been looking at bikes, um, you've been watching YouTube videos, uh, probably pricing parts up. You know, that's what I did. Um, basically, I want to tell you a little bit about myself and how I ended up building the bike I have. Um, right, so I've had motorbikes all my life. I had motocross bikes, um, we used to take them out, uh, take them to the tracks. Um, it used to cost like, for two bikes, because my last had one as well, you're talking like 100 quid a day, thereabouts. They tend to pay your track fees and your racing fees and your petrol, and then you've got jet washing them, and then your diesel, and the fact that I've had to buy a van to take the bikes to the track. Motocross is a really expensive sport, and uh, basically, uh, when I was a kid, I know it probably wasn't right, but we used to play on the fields, and that's when, to me, the days like were good days, um, childhood days and whatnot. You know, it's like you used to play on the fields, you go places. Now I used to do it all the time, but you know, it was better fun than going around in circles. People say, "Oh, motocross is it's a bit of a dead spot," in my opinion, these days. The best people's getting out of it. Everybody's saying it's noisy and it's dangerous. And, well, me being me, I like being dangerous and life isn't worth living unless you're being a little bit dangerous. I mean, my opinion, but I think the whole world's just going a bit through rally. Um, so basically, I had these motocross bikes. Um, my girlfriend, Emma, who I mentioned in the last video, she uh, fell off hers. It was an RM85 two-stroke. She fell off hers and that put her off. So um, basically, the two bikes sat in the shed of mine. I had a 450 four-stroke. Um, basically they sat doing nothing for over a year and I said right you know what it is like her dad ended up buying um, one of these electric bikes from Halfords paid about two grand or something like that for it does 16 mile an hour that, you know anyway so I had to go on it we went for a bike ride and I rode it for about 10 mile and it was yeah, it was kind of good it wasn't too bad at all um, so it made us start thinking and I had a decent mountain bike and I thought probably like you guys you think oh I'll buy a battery for it and I'll buy the back wheel you have a look on eBay you can see the kits for like I don't know three four hundred quid something like that and then you got to buy a battery on top so it's gonna it costs you about a grand thereabouts just to convert a mountain bike even if you know what you're doing with it and even if you've got all the electronic old experience and all the rest so basically um, I had a decent mountain bike and I thought to myself right I'm going to um, I'm going to convert it into an electric one yeah, and that's basically what my original idea was the problem is <clears throat> is that it was a it was um, a twin shock mountain bike and I couldn't because I wanted like a one kilowatt battery bat, uh, bat, one kilowatt back wheel you know I couldn't get a battery that was decent enough to, to power it and to give us decent range because the back shock was in the frame and I bet you guys are having the same problem you know if you've got a hard tail then I guess um, in that um, them packages you get from eBay will probably be alright if you can find the one that's 250 watt or even maybe it's 500 but your battery's not going to last very long the bike's not going to be you know it's going to do around about 16 20 mile an hour something like that <clears throat> the only way I could really afford to do it is if I saw my mountain bike so I started having a look and I thought oh, I don't know what, which way to go with it should I build one shouldn't I build a one <clears throat> spend a thousand quid on a bike I'm not going to be happy with it wasn't going to make my mountain bike any better or you know it's just going to make it heavier isn't it so you know I thought I thought to myself well I'll just build a frame Um I had a bit look into that I am a welder so we're a fabricator of welder so you know I'm not daft when it comes to metal so I thought I'll build myself a frame over the winter and basically what I thought what, what I'd done is I ended up having a look on eBay and I seen these frames they were about I don't know maybe it's four or five hundred quid for the frames and I thought right okay I'll get one of them it's five kilowatt um, by this time I've done a little bit of research I thought right I'll get a five kilowatt back wheel and a, and a controller to run it so I mean it was costing an arm and a leg but I thought yeah that's exactly what I'm doing um, I got the frame through everything was going alright until uh, I mean I've ordered the forks and uh, the crank and pretty much everything on the back shocker now I ordered a big 8 inch uh, rock shock back shocker it's what I wanted it to be it's you know I have I end up Mr. Part out actually I've actually saw my motocross bikes to end up building this thing so 
yeah, I've, I've sold so many two motorbikes and I had to commit fully to doing this as best as I could. And, you know, I wasn't going to, I wanted a, like a, a more legal motocross bike. That's basically what I was trying to find because motocross, you can't take them out anywhere. They're too noisy. Um, you get loads of grief. You know, I fired one up in the garden and the next one neighbours within five minutes were whinging and the bike hadn't even getting hot. And this is only to sell it. So, you know, they're just not good. Anyway, so I thought I want a motocross bike, something that's just as much fun, something that's just as, doesn't have to be as fast top end, but, you know, something that's nippy and fun and good to play with and, you know, it does everything properly. So anyway, I end up getting this back shock and I put it on the frame and, oh my God, if you want to build a bike like this, you've got to do some fabrication work. Um, I put the back shock on and basically it made the rake on the forks, like, ridiculous the the, the the forks were standing straight up they looked absolutely shock, shocking the back shock out was um the back shock was basically straight up and down the seat was get miles in the air the whole stance of the bike was miles and miles wrong so i'm going to take it over i'm going to try and explain to you what i had to do to try and fix these issues so as you can see down this bit here i don't know whether you can see it on the camera but basically i had to cut this section out cut 15 milli out of the top of the frame, make it narrower and move this whole yoke back over uh, to get the, you can see now the forks look all right, but basically the forks came straight down like this. Absolutely ridiculous it looked. Um, the back shock, uh, so you can see how big the back shock is. It's all fully adjustable and whatnot, but basically the back shock came straight down like this, which meant all the swing arm, everything was all wrong. So you can see the lugs here. I've literally I've had to cut them lugs off, move this over 20 mil to get the shock in, the, in a better position. The seat, you can see the motocross style seat. Now, when I got it, it came off the frame here and went straight up like this. And the, the gap between the back wheel and that must have been about two foot, maybe even two and a half foot. Um, it looked really, really bad. So that's some of the fabrication work I've had to do. But I've also had to cut off uh, where the brake caliper goes. Uh, the bracket for the brake helper, I had to adjust that, move that. Um, I've also, when I bought this frame, um, when I bought the frame, it came and it was only tacked together. Like, it, was, it had been powder coated and it had been tacked together like I'm a welder, so it's got to be done properly, kind of thing. So I thought if I'm putting the frame up and whatnot, I might as well, you know, weld it up properly, make sure everything's done properly. Uh, there was another problem here with the swing arm bolt. Um, this was on a rubber don't know why the frame manufacturer put a rubber in it but basically a bush um, I put the bike together and the swing arm could literally move this way left and right a good maybe 20 mil um, so basically I've got to take all that out for the bearings I put bearings all the way through um, to take any play out of the swing arm uh, what else do I need to do the, the whole thing well you can see that it's not actually Touch. It's actually off, but you can see this is the lid. Um, I'll try and show you it. Basically, I've had to fabricate a whole new lid up here for it. Uh, all this lip here, I had to rebuild. I had to strengthen the frame. And um, basically, when what I didn't take into consideration is when I was pricing this job up. Um, and this is one of the things I don't want you to get caught out with. I made it as basically because I sold me motorbikes. I made it as good as I possibly could or you know with the best gear that I possibly could so what happened is is that I bought the five kilowatt back wheel you can see the controller under here this is 150 amp I mean this is a, a beast of a controller but basically what that meant is that I needed to I needed a battery to suit so there's no point in having a big back wheel and a small controller or you know a small back wheel and a big controller there's not real a lot of reason to do that because you're going to overpower it but basically because my controller is 150 amp. I needed a battery capable of discharging 150 amps. Now, when you get into batteries, um, it's important that they don't get hot, whether it's through charging, whether it's through usage. You know, it's you've got to make sure the battery is good. So you see these ones on eBay, like I did, and you think, all right, yeah, I know they're expensive, but basically, it's an engine. You know, that's the, way I, the only way I could, uh, console spend so much money on one. But the same on eBay, and you think they're a thousand pound on eBay, they're about for you know a battery to go in this type of bike. So I'm having a look, and I end up 
emailing lots of people on eBay. Basically, that's where I've sourced most of these parts from. Um, basically, I emailed a lot of these people, and out of about 10 people for the battery, two of them replied back to us. Uh, I'm going to leave the battery for another video because you need to know a lot about batteries. Um, but basically, I've got two people, and I've ended up getting one guy to build it, and he's actually built as an absolute brilliant, awesome battery. This bike will do maybe 60, even maybe small mile using it normally. Like, I would say, you know, I'm not like one of these slow riders or anything, but I'm not a good one of these good you know, lads that will blast about and do wheelies and whatnot around kids and horses and whatever else. Uh, yeah, so there's a few things that you need to be aware of. There is something else I've missed out. I've just remembered there. Um, basically, because the seat came all the way up here, I've had to cut this section of the seat out and these frames here, move it all down, just all of this section here to get the seat uh, rake right. I mean, turn it this way. The bike's looking, you know, it's getting there. It's pretty pretty much done. So, um, I haven't done a walkthrough on this video on this bike yet, so I think I'll do a full walk around on it and explain everything that's on it and why everything's been done. But, uh, yeah, guys, if you're going to build a one and you're going to buy one of these frames or you're going to, you know, that's what your idea is is to be prepared to spend a lot of money that you wouldn't usually think that you would need to because I mean things like the controller that was an absolute fortune the battery was a fortune back wheel or the set of wheels they weren't, they're not cheap nothing on this bike is cheap and it feels like every single guy that you deal with is out there to rip you off like I've had issues with every single part on this bike I bought the forks they needed rebuilding fair enough they weren't brand new but um, uh, well, the, the, they were nigh on new they were, I think they were called uh, new old stock that's what they were so I've had to rebuild them take the extra weight so I've had to buy new springs I've had to put new oil in buy oil seals um, things like uh, the back shock that's actually worked alright in the end the actual shock I've had no issues with apart from the fact that I altered the entire bike when I put it on um, the brake discs uh, I bought Hope V4 brake discs. Try to do it the best I could. Like I say, I've had to cut the back, um, the back mount off, and the back caliper was also catching the the rear um, motor. So I've had to bring the disc out on on um, little spaces to move it out just a couple of mil just to miss to clear it. Uh, things like the tires. Uh, the tires cost us a fortune. The bikes on 26 inch rims. I think the tyres are £100 each, I ordered them from Germany. That's another thing, just, you know, these on 26-inch wheels, you think, oh, you know, the mountain bike tyres, you know, you get tyres, no problem, they'll be cheap, and they're just not. Like, you know, nothing about this bike is being cheap. The whole build is, I'm an average guy, yeah. You know, I go to work every day. I'm not rich by any stretch of the imagination, so the money I've got in this is quite a lot, to my opinion, quite a lot of money. Um... Also, I've had the rear spokes. I waited like three weeks for the wheels to come. The rear spokes weren't built right. I've had to get them rebuilt because the spokes were um, a bit wonky. So, uh, I'm, this bike's, you know, it's got to be a good solid bike. I can't, uh, I can't have anything wrong with it. I want this bike to be spot on. So, yeah, got the wheels and whatnot sorted out. That was another issue. Uh, controller, the wiring on the controller. The email that I got with the wiring diagrams like three emails long. I mean, I've managed to sort it out in the end, but thankfully this guy, I mean, I've done all the wiring myself, but there is a guy at work who was an electrical engineer and I was on about putting breakers and whatnot on because there's so many amateurs and he's going, you know what, no, 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 no. Breakers are only usually for AC voltage, not DC. Things like that I didn't know, so I've had to learn quite a lot doing it. Um, I've sorted the wiring out. Um, where else was there that needed sorting? The throttle wires, them were again a bit of a head bust because they didn't suit the controller or um, I had literally had to strip the whole throttle and find out which wire would, went where. Um, I mentioned the seat. Uh, the crank is a square taper. Um, there's an issue. It's not an issue, but I've had to take the crank um, bottom bracket out um, to get the frame powder coated, obviously. <coughs> Um, after doing the fabrication work on it uh, so I had to take the crank piece out and it's 93mm long which is I think the average size is about 
54 or 58, something like that. So I've got to keep the bottom uh, square crank piece. I think I'm going to struggle, but you know, it's one of them things. Uh, obviously, I'd rather have a hollow piece in. Um, I've been at mountain biking all my life as well, so that's the thing with this bike. I don't really want it to be a motocross bike. It does look a little bit like one because of the seat, but I, I'm trying to have a very clear, distinctive thing here. It's a, When you're building one like this, it's very much in a grey area, law-wise. Um, as far as I'm aware, the law states that it's got to be 250 watt. Well, my back wheel's a lot bigger than that, but it's got to be 250 watt if it's from a manufacturer, e.g., you know, specialised or something like that. If those have built an electric bike, that or Giant or, you know, whoever, if those have built an electric bike because they're a manufacturer, they've got to stick by a UK uh, law, basically, and, and all the stringent rules and whatnot. But the fact that this is a self-build, I do believe in 1983 there was a law passed. If it's a mountain bike that's been converted to an electric bike, you know, the battery, basically, what I've done, and it's been homemade, then it doesn't need any laws or it bypasses any law. Basically, you can use these on the, on the road. If you have a look on YouTube videos and find out e-bike laws, um, it's basically a loophole. But it does put you in a grey area, so if you're going to build one, I would have the pedals on it. Um, and I've got 26-inch wheels on mine as well. Basically, I know it looks like a motorbike, but it's a mountain bike with a big battery in. It's the only way, really, I can try and, you know, get around this because if I say it's a motocross bike for everybody and the police pull us over and say oh, I say yeah yeah it's not a motocross bike and uh, like I need to get a crash helmet for it obviously I've had motocross bikes in my life in my past and I've got a crash helmet but I don't really want to wear a motorbike crash helmet because I just don't want the distinction between them now this thing's absolutely brilliant and I've you know I'm trying to get the I'm trying to keep it legit so if I go around the streets and I don't go around like an idiot, you know, and I pedal the pedals, even if I do use the throttle a little bit. As long as you're not an idiot around people and whatnot, you know, you shouldn't have any hassles. Um, as long, you know, I'm fingers crossed. I'll certainly let you know if I have any hassles on this, but I've been out once or twice on it now, um, and I've had no bother at all off anybody. Everybody's been all right. Um, I went through a horse farm the other day, and the farmers were walking horses, and they didn't even flicker an eyelid. They actually said good morning. There is no proper friendly, no bother whatsoever. Nice people. Um, there was some piece uh, on my last video. I was trying to explain, but I think the wind spoiled it. That uh, some people riding past on racer bikes. Now I've always been in mountain bikes and motocross, so <clears throat> haven't really gotten along with the racer lads. I wouldn't say. Do you know the ones on the racing bikes? Um, but I was standing there the other day, and two of them rode past, all with the lycra and you know. I'm certainly not a liker a guy, but anyway, these guys rode past and they actually said hello and nodded and you know acknowledged us as if I was just a normal person. I usually don't, like, oh no, but no, they were actually perfectly nice to us. Uh, there was an update from last time as well. I was uh, I was on about fixing the puncture. Uh, I have fixed the puncture, but I've actually ripped a nobble off the tire on Thursday out from from that day that I tried to fix this. Uh, from my last video anyway. So I've had to buy an inner tube for it and repair the tyre. So tubeless, down in my opinion, like put tubes in. If you think about it, sorry, keep relating to them. And if you wonder why I keep relating to them, now you maybe know why. But motocross bikes have got tubes in. 100% understand why they've got tubes in. Um, I haven't had no bother yet, but I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna have to drill a hole in the back, free, in the back uh, wheel uh, through the rim and put a, a tyre gripper on because I have put a new inner tube in it. Uh, it's not pulling yet, but, you know, it's just a reason for it to slip and another reason to get a puncture. So I think, you know, for the however much you are, five, ten quid, whatever they are on eBay, I think it's probably worth it just buying one. Um, if you have any questions or anything like that about building an e-bike, please don't hesitate. I am a canny nice guy. Um, you know, I'll certainly help you out if I can. I'll tell you anything that you need to know. I have got experience now and, you know, things like the wiring on the controllers, you know, you will get instructions, just be prepared for them, that's all. Um, I'll do another video about the battery because that's a whole story in itself. So, yeah, like and subscribe and I should be back soon. How about that? I think I've done that right. Right, guys, see you soon.